Hi, I'm Brett Williamson. I'm a senior technical support engineer for Superflow, and today what we're going to talk about is how we correct the power on an engine. Uh, we need to do that in order to give everybody a level playing field when they're testing their engines in different atmospheres. Now, the reason why that's necessary is the engine itself, if we look at the cylinder head of one right here, it's a volumetric device and it takes in air. And when it takes in the air, the idea is to combine the air with fuel to create a combustible mixture inside the combustion chamber. What the air has that we want is the oxygen, and the fuel provides carbon and hydrogen atoms. And we're going to combine those into a chemical mixture, and we're going to create something we can burn inside the combustion chamber. Now the engine's be it's a volumetric device, so it takes in cubic feet of air lots of cubic feet of air. This is a box, one cubic foot. So when that engine's running, it's going to take in a whole lot of these boxes full of air. The problem is, a naturally aspirated engine, the only way it gets the air into it is based on air pressure, the, the, the atmospheric pressure. And the atmospheric pressure is affected by altitude, by weather patterns, and then the amount of oxygen in each gulp of that air, each one of those cubic feet is limited based on air temperature. If it's hotter air, then the air expands and it fills that volume quicker. We don't get as many oxygen molecules. If we have liquid in the air, water, then that displaces some of the oxygen as well. And so if we have air temperature changes, more or less water in the air, or barometric pressure changes, we end up with an effect on our engine's power. We, we make less or perhaps we make more power depending on the atmosphere. So what we need is some means to correct that. And we have in Superflow dynamometers, we provide two formulas that have been around for quite some time. They were provided by the SAE and uh, we take the formulas, put them into the math, and we have our own weather station within the dynamometer system that gives us the weather information that we can apply to the formulas and correct the measured power. So let's see if we can learn how that's being done. All right, so we know the engine's a volumetric device and we've got to get the power corrected to the atmosphere we're testing in. So we've got two formulas in the system. The two formulas come from the SAE. One is called J1349. It came out in 1984 and its most recent revision is sometime in September of 2011. The old standard, J607, it came out back in 1956 and it was obsoleted in 1984 when the J1349 standard came out. That doesn't mean that people aren't still using it. In the performance industry, the J607 standard, which is also commonly referred to as standard temperature and pressure, STP, it's still quite commonly in use. The OEM manufacturers, on the other hand, they must use the J1349 because it is the current standard. So let's see how those standards differ because they do make a difference. So if we take a look at the SAE J1349 and the J607, we know that they correct based on three atmospheric conditions, barometric pressure, vapor pressure, and the air temperature. So let's see if we can understand what the differences are in each standard. Okay, so STP, J607, let's see what the reference values are. For the, for the barometric pressure, it's 29.92 inches of mercury. The vapor pressure, zero inches of mercury pressure, no water in the air. For the air temperature, we use 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's look and see what we use for the J1349 formula. For the barometric pressure, we use 29.23 inches of mercury. That's about 800 foot above sea level. Vapor pressure, again, zero. The standard assumes there's no water in the air. Air temperature, we use 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So now if we look at the two different standards, we can see that they have some different reference values. Let's take the SAE J1349 standard and say we have that atmospheric day. 
zero water, 77 degrees, we would get a multiplier of 1.00. If we applied those atmospheric conditions to our J607 standard, we're going to get a multiplier of about 1.04. It's because the standard uses different references. So now, if we take those standards and we apply them to our measured power, we're going to see how you get different numbers from the same test. Let's use 100 horsepower as our measured standard. So we'll take 100 times 1.00, that would be our SAE day, and we get 100 corrected horsepower. Notice the CHP, it's different. Now if we apply that same 100 horsepower that we measured to the STP correction, the J607 correction, we would take 100 times 1.04 and we would end up with 104 corrected horsepower. Again, the CHP, that's important to understand. So now what we know is that with two different standards, we can run one test and get two different numbers. So as a consumer of dyno services, or if you're a dyno operator, you've got to be consistent in your approach. You got to make sure that the corrected numbers you're giving are based on the same standard all the time. We've talked about the two formulas and how they're derived and where they come from. They come from the SAE. So now what we're looking at here on this screen is we're looking at the actual measurements that the dynamometer gives us. It gives us the atmospheric channels, uh, if you will, the weather channels, uh, through its own sensors. We've got a barometric pressure sensor, we've got a uh, humidity sensor, which from that we can calculate the vapor pressure, and we've also got an air temperature sensor. And with that, we're then able to calculate the multipliers that we're going to use with whichever correction formula that we choose. In this particular example, we've got the SAE J1349 correction showing about 1.036. For the J607 correction, also referred to as standard temperature and pressure, we've got 1.077. So in our example before, where we showed how that would multiply against a measured 100 horsepower, you can see as we use these multipliers, you would show 103.6 on the J1349 and 107.7 for the J607 or, or the old standard temperature and pressure correction. For you customers out there that are interested in air density, we're showing also the air density equations here. Um, at sea level, air density is approximately 0 0.076 pounds per cubic foot. And when we look at this particular atmosphere we're testing in here, it's showing 0 0.071. Uh, we also show a density altitude. The density altitude shows 2,466 feet quite a bit above sea level. So once you apply those multipliers to your power readings, what we've got here on this screen is we've got three different power readings, the raw engine power, which is showing about 447 horsepower, and then we can apply the SAE J1349 correction, and you'll see that we've got about 467 horsepower, if we apply the older standard, the obsolete one, the J607 standard temperature and pressure correction, we show all the way up to 491 horsepower. If you see here on the graph, each of those numbers is correct. It's just a matter of which formula you're choosing to use. Across the bottom of the graph and using the right hand vertical axis, we're showing you the actual correction multipliers. We're showing you the SAE J1349 on the bottom, the red line, and the blue line above it, the J607. So now you've seen how we apply those formulas, how we take the measured power and create a, an estimated correction horsepower, and those are the numbers that you're going to use in your advertisement, in your marketing, uh, to brag to your buddies. And that's really what correction formulas let you do. It gives you a way to compare your engine to someone else's engine when you're testing in different atmospheres.